I would like to take this opportunity to share with you a message of unity, reconciliation, and hope. I also want to take advantage of the rights granted by law to me to express my experience and my opinion on what happens in Nicaragua with the intention of sharing some ideas that contribute to the democratic process and the possibility to see Nicaragua turn into a republic. I want to emphasize my situation as a Nicaraguan living abroad, as there are hundreds of thousands, especially living in Costa Rica, Spain, and the United States. I want to make special mention of this situation because much is said that the problems of Nicaragua must be solved by Nicaraguans. And I must say that we are the only country in Latin America that does not grant the vote, the right to vote abroad. I also want to highlight the fact that I am a victim of political persecution by the current regime of Daniel Ortega and Rosario Murillo, as well as thousands who seek to flee because the conditions of the country does not guarantee the universal human rights that we should all enjoy. Now, I must refer to the NICA Act 2017 and address to the Nicaraguan people, the hundreds of, of thousands who live abroad, and also the Congress people who are concerned about the stability in the region and the way in which the taxes of their constituents should be invested abroad. I must start by stressing that this bill six four things one fair free and transparent elections and therefore respect for the right of citizens to participate in the country's political affairs two that the rule of law be respected and therefore that the constitutional mandate be respected that we're all equal and justice must be impartial three that human rights be respected and therefore that we all have the same opportunities to fully develop ourselves. And four, that the public treasury be respected and that corruption be eliminated. And therefore, that the management of public affairs should not give privileges or benefits to anyone in particular. It is not an interventionist instrument, nor does it seek to establish any mechanism nor obligation nor responsibility different from those already existing in the Nicaraguan political constitution. In particular, I want to say that I think that the recount of the facts in the initiative that has led us to this situation fell short and that these same recount of the violations have been made for more than five years. It is important to note that the electoral fraud of 2008 meant that 40 municipalities or 25% of the territory, including the most important department, departmental heads, such as Managua, Leon, Masaya, Hinotega, Huigalpa, and other strategic municipalities like Puerto Corinto were stolen. The gross electoral fraud was done simply by not publishing the results of the minutes act by act per electoral ballot as mandated by law and publishing figures that were made up to their convenience. All demonstrations and protests were suppressed and in some cases violently avoided by mobs protected and guarded by the same police force. There are cases of violence, specifically the case of Leonor Martinez, Jaime Chavarria, Eli Eliezer Marin, that have remained in impunity and oblivion. The electoral fraud of 2011 was a bit more sophisticated and was mainly due to the fact that the departmental electoral councils and the municipal electoral councils 
were fully controlled by the regime. This fraud allowed the regime to retain the presidency unconstitutionally and become the absolute majority in parliament in order to change the country's political constitution. Regrettably, the regime has not shown the slightest of interest in listening or correcting and rather has made the situation worse. I also consider it incorrect to assert categorically that civil society and the private sector are indifferent and have not wanted to contribute to the solution of the country's political problems. Since I was a member and actively participated since 2008 in the allegations of fraud in the municipal elections and then in the meetings trying to establish a level field for the general election of 2011, which was not possible. They are simply hostages of the imposed system, although some I know that they are accomplices. I also remember how the winds began to blow, favoring the establishment of a political and economic regime based on Venezuelan cooperation. I still remember clearly the debates where it was pointed out that it was wrong to replace European and American cooperation based on donations, grants, by Venezuelan cooperation based on loans. But the will of the regime was imposed, and as the saying goes, interest was able to do more than love for Nicaragua. Here, we can see clearly how the economics go hand in hand with politics. And I take the opportunity to reject sharply any argument that continues to insist that economic stability must remain apart from clear political rules. Let's break it down and start calling it by its name. Now that is clear that the model of socialism over the 21st century financed by Venezuela has failed, it is necessary to decide whether we continue with the capital, capitalist and free market model of our main partner, the United States, or we allow the regime to impose a model foreign to our history and our traditions that could be offered by the allies of the regime, like Russia and Iran. And here I take advantage also to reject sharply all those beautiful phrases as the sovereign right that appeal to any nationalist sentiment and tend to irresponsibly forget the reality that Nicaragua is a small, dependent country on international cooperation. And although we can initially think that cooperation brings a condition it is also important to say and remember that under the Bolaños administration, yes, we can establish a transparent and reliable accountability system, even for the international community to the point that cooperation became the budget support type. Experts in the field know that this is the maximum expression of confidence in the political and economic affairs of the country to begin to consider some possible solutions to the crisis, it is important to start from the reality that Venezuelan cooperation amounts to more than $4,000 million, that's $4 billion, and it is deposited in the national financial system in private accounts controlled by the presidential couple. In order to assess the seriousness of this issue, it is important to emphasize that this is the reason why private external debt is currently higher than national public debt. This sad reality makes the private sector hostage. It is also important to emphasize 
that the system of electoral reimbursement also renders political parties hostage. We cannot forget the public statement made by the candidate for vice president in 2011, Mr. Edmundo Jarquin, accepting that the alliance decided not to denounce or declare void those same elections since if they had done so, they would have received, they would not have received their corresponding re reimbursement. I would like to believe that the problems of the Nicaraguans must be solved in Nicaragua by the Nicaraguans themselves, but the conditions for that to be a reality are not given. We must start from the fact that the same government is spending almost half a million dollars a year to pay for the services of Mr. Richard Gephardt's law firm and lobby against the NICA Act. Also, that some businessmen specializing in crisis management and advising top executives are paying the services of Mr. Arturo Estopinian to lobby against th this initiative. Rather, we should see all those resources and energy invested in developing a real plan of action developed by all the stakeholders that will get us out of the crisis. This plan should include at least the same four points that are included in the NICA Act initiative so that when it is approved, it demonstrates the interest, responsibility, and ability of Nicaraguans to solve their own problems and not apply the economic sanctions that are stipulated in the same. I strongly reject the statements of the generals, commanders, and heroes of the revolution seeking to frighten and intimidate any right of opinion and expression that are stipulated in Articles 29 and 30 of the political constitution of Nicaragua, especially when this means that we have been restricted that same right to self-determination. Let's stop crying and start acting. Let's stop worrying and start working. From my point of view, I consider that the solution must contain at least the following points. One, in the electoral sphere, A, in this municipal elections, reinstate the right we had to participate through popular subscription. B, the right to vote abroad. C, reorganization of the Supreme Electoral Council to ensure impartiality. Two, in the judicial field, A, create an internal commission against impunity of Nicaragua. B, respect the time that the law mandates and the judges who violate it are punished. C, elaborate a report of the cases that are shelved, obstructing justice. Three, in the area of human rights and democracy, A, a report on cases of human rights violations, including those to business leaders used as political persecution, and B, the establishment of a system of primary elections similar to that of Honduras. C, respect and implementation of the law of citizen participation that guarantees the self-determination of the people. Number four, in the area of transparency and accountability, A, that the Venezuelan cooperation funds be deposited in a savings account that cannot be used freely or deposited in private banks. B, that a report be prepared on the part of the IFIS, World Bank, IDB, CABE, IMF, to include a report on how this cooperation should be used to guarantee the repayment of that debt and that in no way implies a burden for the National Treasury. I want to conclude by reiterating that Nicaragua's future lies in the free participation of all citizens, including Nicaraguans living abroad, who for many years have contributed to the country's economy by sending family remittances. 
The struggle continues and the country lives. May God bless the United States of America and Nicaragua.